This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. Go Pascal. Well, it's good to be back in the booth with Quinn Grovey. Stood right behind him during Arkansas's win against Cincinnati, helping point out the tackles, the fumbles, the forced fumble, and uh, the sacks and everything else for Chuck. And uh, had a good old time. We get to do it again on Saturday against South Carolina. And we've got Quinn with us right here today. Hey, Quinn, how you doing? Thanks for coming on. Man, I'm doing good. I'm glad to come on your show. I, I will say that this is this is your radio show is one of the shows that I love to listen to because of how y'all break it down, and uh, it's a uh, it's a good one. I, I think it's one of the best in the state. So uh, anytime you want me to join, I'm glad to join. Did you guys get that? You can edit that out, turn that into a promo. <laughs> Quinn said this, so we can sort of underline it and everything. Uh, and the checks in the mail, Quinn. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Hey, um, we've got a tough one on Saturday. And, look, I mean, Ben Bryant had, had his moments in the second half for yep. Cincinnati. Missed some open receivers in the first half. Spencer Rattler feels like a much different animal and a better quarterback overall. Where do you see an edge in, in, in quarter? Does Arkansas have the edge with K.J.? Do you think that that, that, that Rattler might? No, I, I, I think Arkansas has the edge with K.J. Uh, and, and, I, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. I mean, it's the reasons we talked about all summer. I mean, you, your second year with Kendall Browse, uh, I mean, K.J. is maturing at a level uh, that, that's really good for this Arkansas football team. I mean, his mindset uh, and his – I mean, he has a huge ability to – he does not want to turn the football over. And so he's going to make sure that he's going to protect his team in a lot of different ways. And But you can also add him as a dynamic runner. So Arkansas is in a good spot. K.J. is always going to have uh, great numbers in this offense. And even though, you know, he was, he was 18 to 26, he completed 69% of his passes, 223 yards. He didn't even he, – he didn't stretch the field the way he normally does. And I think that that's the next component to it. Uh, I think they want to be better at stretching the field. Uh, I think you'll see Matt Landers, Warren Thompson, Jaden Hazel will continue to mesh with KJ. And once they get that 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 vertical game going, I think you're going to see Arkansas be a tough out. So if you if you ask me to pick which quarterback I'm I'm riding with, I'm riding with KJ. Yeah, I I, I thought that the you know the easier term, the vertical passing game, the deep passing game would would be something that's featured, but, you know, you didn't see it very much on Saturday, and I think K.J. had his reasons for why he might have uh, not, not thrown it deep. I, I want to ask you about K.J. as a person, because you, you've been around yep. him quite a bit. I think you've gotten to know him as a competitor, yep. too, as a Madden NFL competitor. <laughs> yeah. we, can, well, we can look at everything that's happening on a football field. We can hear what the teammates are saying about him as a leader. You've spent enough time around him, I think, to get a sense of what K.J. is like as a man, and and, yeah. and as a teammate, so what did you learn about KJ Jefferson, one on one? Yeah, no, he he is he is a great guy. Uh, he's a family guy, and so he loves his, he loves his family, and they support him in, in a lot of different ways. And you know, KJ is a lot funnier. I think people are starting to see that he has a personality. I think the first couple of years. I don't want to say it was robotic, but he would just get the answer out and move on to the next question. But now I think people are really starting to see uh, KJ elaborate, talk about things a little bit deeper, uh, more meaningful. And KJ is is uh, he's doing that, and so I think his teammates really respond to him in a lot of different ways. Uh, he's one heck of a competitor. He doesn't want to lose at anything. And uh, I mean, I know that firsthand. You talked about the, the Madden thing, which is. Is so uh, we we can talk about that or not, but um, he is very very smart, understanding what the defenses are trying to do to him. Um, he's very very calm. He's maturing in a lot of different ways, and and one of the things one of the ways I would tell you is like that that third nine in the in the fourth quarter when it was a time to close the game out. KJ has been working on footwork, throwing the football, all that type of stuff. To, to be successful throwing the ball in that situation. But because he wants to win, that's the one thing I will say about him. He wants to win, first and foremost, over stats, anything else. He pulled the ball down and got the first down and continued that drive for Arkansas. He also did one thing that I thought was very different than what he would have done last year, which is when he ran that football on that third nine, he got out of bounds. He didn't take a hit. He didn't try to run anybody over. 
So again, that's a mature that's a mature decision by KJ because he can he's six three, two hundred thirty five, two hundred forty pounds. He can run over you, but he doesn't have to need to he doesn't need to show you that. So this is all about getting out of bounds, getting the first down, closing his team out. So his stats are going to come, but the the way he's going to continue to get recognition in the SEC is winning football games, and that's really all he cares about. Quinn, this is Clay, and I I'm. I'm reminded of the great duel that you had with with Andre Ware yep. um, in Little Rock, and just what it's like to be a quarterback when the other guy, and you don't you don't play against the other quarterback. Yeah, that's right. But but it, there's always the idea that I'm competing, and Spencer uh-huh. Rattler is a name brand, maybe Absolutely. more so than KJ. Um, yeah. What's that like, and, and does that motivate a quarterback? And it did for you. Absolutely, it motivates you. Um, but the biggest thing you've got to do is stay within your your team and not – You, I mean, like, when there's time to make adjustments, you can't be, you know, like standing on the sideline watching that other quarterback play. You need to be over there talking with your team. So as long as you take care of your business and you need to stay focused on your business, if you do that, you're fine. If they score, yeah, you, look – your mindset is, and, and, and when you're dealing with another quarterback like that, we're probably going to have to score every possession. So I already know where my mindset is. I just got to be able to go handle that whenever I get out on the field. So Spencer Rattler is a big name. Spencer Rattler was a Heisman Trophy candidate. Spencer Rattler played for the University of Oklahoma and really didn't have a bad season and lost his job and then came on over to uh, South Carolina. I think you'll see Spencer Rattler continue to be more comfortable because He's not dealing with that that, that, that Oklahoma, the Oklahoma fan base, and South Carolina, quite frankly, is not really expected to do much. I mean, so I think the I think the pressure is low for him, and I think you'll see him to uh, grow uh, at a at a at a at a big level. But yeah, 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 when you when you're playing against a guy like that, you know it's on national TV. You got to deal with that. And as long as you take care of your business, stay focused with it, within your game plan, not try to do anything outside of that. And that's where KJ is. I don't think he's. I don't think he's concerned about trying to outduel anybody. He just wants to win, and stats will be a byproduct of winning. You know, when you hear coaches talk about the improvement that you make between week one and two, did you realize that when you were a player? And do you see that possibly happening with this Arkansas team that they? They're better this week. Yeah, I I think they'll be better. I mean, Clay, when you look at when you look at this this game last week, I mean, honestly, I think I think most people will say that Arkansas had a lot of room for improvement. And the thing about it is, that's a great thing because that means your program is moving in the right direction. When you can one be the top twenty five team that was in the college football playoff last year. Uh, to uh, to win it on a big stage like that and not play your best game, you know those are games that you know in the past you'd be like, okay, yeah, we're going to find a way to lose this thing, but they found a way to win it, even though they were in that situation. I was in a booth. I never felt like Cincinnati was going to be a huge threat. I always felt like we were the better team, with the exception of when they got the ball on the three yard line and the fans showed up and showed out and pushed them back. And then after they, they, they returned that punt, and then Jordan Dominic came in and and, uh, and got the sack. So I, those are the two times I was really nervous. But, yeah, yeah, this football team won a game against a top 25 program and didn't play their best game. And so now you can really go into that, that team room, put, get on the grease board and talk about all the things that went wrong, but still understand you won that football game against a, a really quality opponent. Cincinnati may not lose another game the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. And so that's a – we'll be cheering for them too. Uh, so uh, it's one of those things where uh, I, I think Arkansas is in a good spot. And, and Quinn, you know, like you talked about things you improve week in and week out. Football is so much different than, than other sports, especially, you know, collegiate sports. You know, you, you, in, in basketball you have time to get everything to start clicking and, and you want everything to be rolling right about – Late January, early February, that way you have the momentum going into March. In, in, in baseball, you, you have the non-conference. You have the first couple weeks of SEC play to really get everything locked in. With a sport like football, you, you don't have any time to waste. you got 12 games in 13 weeks. You, you, you better be 
as good as you are at game one as you are at game 12. But from the mindset of somebody who obviously played college football, when is like a timeline of where you want to be of where you're saying, all right, we're, we're clicking on all cylinders. Is it from week one to week two, or is it more just, you know, it, as long as everything's clicking by the time you get to October, everything should be good. No, you, I mean, like you, you want to click game mm-hmm. one, if that, if that's the case. I mean, you, you want to be able to click game one, but a lot of times there's so many things that run through your mind before you, when you have that first game. I mean, I used to always think about that as like, you know, I played the game and, you know, I was getting ready for an upcoming season. And, you know, you go through practices, you knew what you were getting ready to do. But but things didn't really start adding up until you were on the field with the lights on, with the people in the stands and all that kind of that, – that first game is different for a lot of people. I mean, you've got a lot of transfers that have moved over. You're really trying to get comfortable with all that kind of stuff. The first game is – is, is one of those things where you work out a lot of the kinks, and I, and I believe that's why they say from game one to game mm-hmm. two. I know that's a cliche, but it's one of those things where you uh, you feel very good about it. But, uh, yeah, now you want to start it from game one. But here's the deal. As, as long as you're figuring it out and you can you still have something in your arsenal that's going to allow you to win, and and to me it's it's going to be that running game. That running game allows you to work through a lot of different things with that offensive line. I mean, you've got the conventional run game with the inside zone, the outside zone, the G-power, all that stuff with the running backs. But when things get tough, you can also insert the run game with KJ. And so now you've got those big offensive linemen leaning on you from a power standpoint, just leaning on you, leaning on you. And then all of a sudden, you want to run a zone read concept, and now that defensive lineman that's been fighting his tail off the entire game says, I'm not blocked, and now I've got to decide, do I take Rocket or do I take KJ? That puts you in a – I mean, you go from power, power, power to finesse, and then all of a sudden if you make the wrong decision, you're headed down on silent. Arkansas is going to always be able to run the football. I think that's a security blanket for them. So I think that they will always be in the game. Once you get this passing game going on the outside, being very explosive, then I think this offense is going to take it to the next level. But Trey Knox is a guy – and the inside, that's only going to benefit from everything else happening. And he had a great game uh, this past week, and I think you may find him be, you may find him being the uh, the leading receiver on this football team by the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And staying with the wide receivers on the outside, week one uh, did. Did anybody really think proved to you to be the clear cut wide receiver this week? I I didn't really see anything that really stood that much yeah. apart between them. I didn't think that any of them played bad, but. One game in, who who do you think is going to be that quote unquote guy? I mean, is it going to be yeah. Top Warren? I mean, could it could it be Landers? Is it going to be Hasselwood like we've all kind of assumed it would be? Yeah, no, I I think that uh, again, I I don't think that the outside passing game with the receivers was where they wanted it to be. I mean, you know, Matt Landers had three catches, Hazelwood had three catches, Raheem, uh, excuse me, Warren Thompson had two catches. Uh, and most of those were like short stop routes. Mm-hmm. I mean, just qu- quick, get it out. But again, you got to sometimes you got to take what the defense is giving you, and and that's okay. Uh, be able to do that, and that's what KJ did. Uh, I think that this next week you're going to continue to see them try to push the ball down the field. That's the next component that they really want to do is be more explosive in the passing game. We had KJ on our podcast, the Razorback Daily, and uh, he talked about how early on it. It may, you know, the passing game may not be as explosive as most people think, and but we're going to continue to work through it. And when you know a, a huge component of your offense hadn't really been unleashed yet, you've been able to just line up and run the ball, do whatever you want to do, take the short stuff. That's fine. That's completely fine. That's okay. But I, you know, I'm not sure who's going to lead this team in receiving. I think you got three quality guys that can make some plays. I don't think they made the plays that they wanted to make last week. Uh, you got to give Hazelwood a lot of credit uh, on the touchdown. I mean, you know, KJ trusts those receivers in a big, big way. He he threw that ball to Hazelwood for that touchdown. That, that was like in the Bermuda Triangle. I mean, it's like there's three Cincinnati Bearcats around him, but because he trusts those guys and they all understand that if I can't catch it, I'm I'm going I'm gonna knock it down. But that touchdown was great ball placement. Even though it was in between three guys, Hazelwood did a nice job on the back shoulder, came up with the catch. And so um, I think you're going to see this this receiving core continue to take off. 
I don't know who's going to be the number one guy, but I think there's going to be some. All three of these guys can be very, very good. The one thing when I was talking to the coaches, the one thing about it is I think all three of them will be able to cause problems. And when you can line up three receivers that can cause problems and beat you vertically, now the defense is in a bad spot because I think in college you may have one guy that can cover. You may have one and a half guy that can cover. But you ain't got three guys that can cover. And so once you figure that out and start getting confidence in all three of those receivers, this can really be a, an explosive offense uh, coupled with this run game. All right, last thing here, Quinn. <clears throat> competitors are competitors. No matter what their age is, you move on from football, and there's other things you compete at, business, cornhole, thumb wrestling, whatever. And then there's Madden oh, NFL going? football, right, <laughs> which is a whole other level of competition. What is the series <laughs> record with you and KJ, Man. and is there any smack talk that goes back and forth? Well, trust me, there's a lot of smack talk. Now, we uh, hey, we, we care for one another, and we'll talk to one another, and uh, you know, we'll talk about a lot of stuff. But when we, when we line up and hit that entrance into the Madden, it's, it's a war. <laughs> and, uh, you know, KJ, KJ's up on me. I hate to admit it. Ooh. I do think, I do believe that I am, uh, I, I did believe I was the best Madden player out there. KJ's up on me 17-3. to 3. I, I'm, I'm just going to go and throw it on out there. He's that but, good? You know, I think he, he – I mean, look, he's had some questionable stuff happen. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we talk about it. And he, I'm like, man, how do you get that – how did you make that catch? That's crazy. You know that shouldn't happen. I mean, there's a lot of gibberish going on back and forth. And uh, we hadn't started. The new Madden is out now. And so we'll continue to play. Um, I probably won't mess with him throughout the football season a whole lot. But – We'll get it cranked up again, you know, towards the end of the football season. But yeah, he's up on me seventeen to three right now. I'm coming back. I, I promise you. I'm not going to roll over and play dead. There's no way. And, and then once I understand exactly what he's doing, and you you would think that I would understand it after twenty games, but uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and give him credit for that. And the thing about it though is, which is which is crazy, which a lot of people wouldn't understand. When we're on that headset talking to one another about, you know, what I'm getting ready to do to you and what he's getting ready to do to me, we're we're actually playing football. And mm-hmm. so what I'm doing from a defensive scheme standpoint, and he sees it, uh, I mean, he he can he easily can translate that to the football field. And so it's it's pretty cool to hear him talk about, um, you know, you you move a linebacker out, I'm going to replace the linebacker with a with a dart right behind you. I mean, it's it's those cool things that we have when we're talking about Madden, that allows you to um, uh, translate it to the field. I mean, Yes KJ, or no, Quinn? Do you ever get a pedicure? <laughs> absolutely. We talked about that, too. Uh, yeah. We don't, we don't, we, hey, look, we love pedicures. I mean, I had nothing wrong with a pedicure. I just love kick them. On back, uh, just kick on back and let them take care of you. I love when they bring out that little salt, rub it up around your calf and all that kind of stuff. I mean, That's enough like information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting a pedicure and the salt in your legs and having them rubbed is better than having a 15% winning percentage against K.J. Jefferson in, uh, in Madden football. <laughs> you figured it out that I quick, did. huh? Okay. Well, you know, us geeks, we're stat people all the time. Baseball what? stats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm changing that, though. It's not going It's not going to continue. Trust good, me. Good, luck to good luck to you. Good luck to you, I just Quinn. would say we're real close. I never give, I would never give the numbers up. That's right. He gave us facts right there. And facts no, are that's facts. Fine. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with throwing out those numbers because... When I come back on, I'm going to be able to tell you a different story. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first-to-market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, eSports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, 50. That's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, 5-0. Bet online, where the game starts.